Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. This video is going to be about a pen that a number of you have asked about. One of those pens that I wasn't overly thrilled with, but considering the investment I have in the series, and we'll discuss the series, I felt the pen was worth acquiring. And it arrived. It was part of my uh, mailbag. You know, just simplistic packaging. It slides out. You get a little converter full of silicone grease. And here's the pen. So you may ask, what pen is this? The jewel on the top gives you some indication. The Parker 51 shape gives you another indication. And if you look at the engraving on the cap band, it's a 601A. So as we pull off the cap, we'll see why it has a tubular nib. Um, some people may be surprised about this, but I have, quote, vintage Chinese pens that also have tubular nibs like this. I find the feed quite interesting. It looks like it's a cut ebonite feed, which is quite nice. We'll see how that makes for the writing experience. A nice ink window. You can see that breather tube inside of there. And this is a uh, pump filler. You know, nice metal rod here and it springs back. And uh, the video that I did on the first one of these I got showed you could fill it up with just three pumps, which was very nice. So we're just totally on LED light now, a little incandescent, but mostly LED. So this green color, I think, is coming out. It's a kind of dark green, kind of nice. I mean, it's a very sophisticated looking pen. All of these pens have come with interesting instructions. I'm not going to go through translation, but the other side gives you really functional instructions. This shows the different parts of the pen, and it also shows the different, you know, filling mechanisms. You know, it doesn't show the spring. This one gives you filling instructions, you know, very visual, so whether you can read Chinese or not, you can still get the hang of it. Shows you lubricating it, doesn't show you how to take it apart, though. And shows you cleaning it, shows you removing the, unscrewing the nib and, and section and flushing it, so that's kind of nice. And this is something they've done consistently. They've continued to update this as they make new models and different filling systems. So here's a collection of, of 601s. Not all that I have, but enough to show the differences. These are the two that I did the video on to show the filling mechanism. This one's the vacuumatic, and this is the pump filler. And these have been filled since that video and, and written with regularly, probably once or twice a week. And one thing I'll say about these and the other series, which we'll uh, get into a little bit later, is these caps seal very, very well. The nibs don't dry out. I put a bent nib in the vacuumatic and it writes very well. It gives me like a medium to a medium broad line, which I really like. Uh, the normal 601 had a really fine line, a little bit finer than, than I'm comfortable with. They said there were changes on the 601A besides the nib and they talked about the window, but to me the window and these two pens are the same. Some of the earlier ones had a, a thinner window. It wasn't quite as wide. So maybe the change that was made was before they changed that to a tubular nib. And obviously the one that doesn't have the jewel on is the one that's a vacuumatic and this is the pump filler. I thought it was nice that they did that and all these caps fit very, very well. So here's some pens we're going to compare it to. And as I mentioned, I uh, got this pen a while ago. Didn't do a video on it. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting lacquer on metal. Kind of reminiscent maybe of a Parker. And the clip is also stylized after a Parker. Definitely an arrow, but I've never seen that design on a Parker pen. 
But as you pull off the cap, you'll notice a tubular nib. So I'm calling these tubular nibs, and you'll see in a moment why I'm doing that instead of the Schaefer Triumph nib. We're going to bring this one out. It's a nice little small tuck away one. And it is definitely styled after the Schaefer nib. But if you roll around, you'll see the Schaefer nib is a rolled piece of steel. Or sorry, a rolled piece of gold in this case. Whereas the Chinese nib appears to be a solid piece. Now that could have been rolled from a sheet and welded and then cleaned up. But, and the feeds are similar. So there's definitely homage to the Schaefer nib. Um, you can see the Schaefer nib has a little bit of an upturn. This is slanted down. The other version that was quite popular with this style of nib. And here it is in, uh, in steel, and it says made in Canada on it. If we turn it around, you'll see there's no seam in that one. And this is a snorkel. The two Schaefer's I've shown you are not functional. I have no motivation to get these working again. You know, it's just, uh, difficult filling mechanism. They're hard pens to take apart. And, you know, maybe if I do take it apart, I could use the nib in my uh, uh, one of my Leicas. So here I have the 601A at the bottom, followed by a number of, of 618s. The 618, in, in my perspective, was the first wing song that came out, which mimicked the 51 to the level that it did with the hooded nib. The 618s are piston fill pens, which was a unique combination. They came in a phenomenal amount of different colors, gold or, or silver trim. This one here with the black line cap and, and the black cap is a, is a Bobby original. The blue one is very nice. I mean, all of these pens are extremely good looking. Beautiful is a term I might use. Uh, these four here have been constantly inked up and in use. This one I did a replacement with a gold nib. This one has a Fude nib in it. This is my daily writer with my blue pawn, the Plains of Abraham, my nice little uh, in indelible uh, noodler's ink. And this becomes like a daily writer. I think it has uh, sea green, or sorry, um, deep sea from uh, Robert Osterp. And all of these four pens write first time, every time, consistent. No hard starts, no skips. I mean, I have to give Wing Sung a lot of credit. They've really done an excellent job as a everyday carry pen. The clip on the 601s are, is more classic Parker design versus the more stylized one or more modern version, you know, kind of reminiscent of the Sonnet and, and later versions of the Parkers. Here's a book I picked up a few years ago. Um, pretty certain it was the DC Pen Show from Pendemonium. I saw the book, I said, got to have it, and they had it at an excellent price, so it was an easy purchase. Where they talk about the Triumph nib. And one of the things it mentions and confirms that the Triumph nib was first brought out in 1942. So it's nice to get a confirmation in written form. The 40s were a difficult time for many of the pen manufacturers because of the war effort, but it didn't stop Schaefer from coming out with a new type of nib. They called it the wraparound. Notice they mentioned it's welded. I'd be remiss if I didn't take advantage of this nice bright autumn light coming in to really show off the, the details and to really bring out the color of these pens. That green is still a very dark green, but the aqua blue is definitely aqua blue, and that semi-transparent blue pen is very nice, and there's my black one with a gold trim, which writes every day and has been part of 
my everyday writing since I first got the pen, and I've been very happy with the nib. How it writes consistently, it needs to be refilled, so it took a while to get through those two milliliters of ink in there. So what ink to put in the pen, for some reason this ink called out to me. As you can see, I've used quite a bit of that 100 milliliters. I probably gave away about 10 or 15 of it. Um, I just think it's a nice dark green, a little bit of blue in it. Not certain what it's called, why it's called palm green, but I like the ink and I like all the sheets and kresnak inks that I have. Colors of nature. They're hard to find now. So one of the things that's consistent about this pen that's designed after the Parker 51 is that it's very ergonomic and that cap is tight. And the thing that I've learned is always turn it counterclockwise that way uh, you avoid any potential of unscrewing the section which I've done on, on more than one occasion. The pen is plenty long enough to fit in anybody's hand. Let's flip it around and get some sunlight on that, the right angle. And, and you know, even though this section is somewhat on the thin side, and we'll give you those range of dimensions, I find this section very, very comfortable to use. And of course, you can hold it anywhere. So those people that like to hold the pen away from the nib, you can do that. You don't really feel that clutch ring or interfere with your holding of the pen. And is I think all pens should, it gives the option of being posted and it posts very well and it actually I think helps the balance be a little bit more back weighted and more towards the crook of the hand. This nib writes exactly like I expect it to write. Uh, I've used a number of Schaefer Triumph nibs. Lays down a decent patch of ink. Um, this palm green from Sheets and Kringer looks good. Nice choice. You can see I picked up some paper. So this nib just doesn't excite me. And my writing over the camera is certainly degraded recently. I mean, it's consistent writer. I mean, that's a very, I call it an extra fine line. You don't need any pressure to write with it. All the things that you'd expect from the Schaefer nib are exemplified in this pen. So let's give it a rating. So here's where I need to be objective as much as I can, and I'm going to give it an 8.4. The nib doesn't excite me, but there's many people who probably find a nib like this great. The pen is extremely well made. It functions excellently. It looks good. It's going to last forever. It can become a daily writer. So to me, that warrants the 8.4. Because of the nib, and you can't really do anything about this nib, I'm just, I can't give it any higher. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at, a, at an interesting pen that many of you have expressed an interest in. Um, hopefully this has helped you decide whether this is a pen you would like to own. So may you have many great, exceptional, exciting, interesting writing experiences and may they all encourage you to put thoughts on paper, share the thoughts, get some pen pals, whatever. So you reach the end of this video. Until the next video, bye for now. And you can see how consistent that writes.